Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jorge Morales. Today I'm going to make a really quick video, a really small video, but I think it's very interesting and it's very it's going to be very helpful for all of you guys that are doing mechanical or are in the mechanical engineering field doing finite element simulations and you want to, to speed up the solution time uh, in order to compute the simulations a little bit faster. And I just want to make this small video, just small configurations in Windows, just to show you how you can take advantage of NVIDIA graphics cards in order to accelerate this process of computational time for ANSI specifically. I already have a video before uh, talking about how you can make this on Abacus and I think it's actually pretty good for you all of, for all of you guys. It's really informative. So I just want to make this for ANSYS as well after this time. I think it's very helpful and I got a little bit more of experience in ANSYS in the last two years and I just want to share this with you. As, as I just told you, using NVIDIA graphics cards as accelerators, you can speed up the computational time for your finite element simulations. And actually it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm very, very excited. And let's go directly into ANSYS in order to show you how this is going to work. So first of all, we have this model. It's actually kind of a big model, medium model. Um, it is a compressor. It's a, a kind of a huge compressor. It's a really huge uh, steel machine or steel device. And it's around six meters by four meters and actually it's quite big. It's a real size. Uh, the material is steel and it's, this is going to be just a pure statical structural simulations, but that's not actually the objective. The objective is just to show you how you can take advantage of NVIDIA graphics cards in order to accelerate the computational time. For the settings for today, we are going to take a look into the solve process settings. I mean, you, you just need to go into the solve process settings and then here you can always take a look um, how much cores, CPU cores, physical cores in the case of ANSYS are you going to utilize in order to make your solution. It depends on the model that you have. You, I will always recommend you to have um, the maximum cost that you can use. But for example, if you have a small model like 100,000 elements, it makes totally no sense and it's going to make actually worse the computational time when you uh, select many cores, like above four cores or six cores, it's not going to really improve, actually it's going to make it worse. So it's a really quite complex uh, history in the background of how many cores depending on how many elements for your simulations. But for this model, in this case, we are going to have around 1 million, 1.3 million elements, which is kind of a lot for a lot of you guys. Um, and in this case, we're going to solve this with 12 cores because I usually recommend up to 12 to 16 cores for one GPU. In my case, I'm going to use only one GPU. And if you use, if you select non GPUs, the system, of course, is going to take advantage of non GPUs. It's just going to run purely with the CPU. And if you select GPU acceleration and NVIDIA, you can select here how many devices you are going to use in the case that you have multiple GPUs in your system. In my case, I have as well multiple GPUs, but I'm going to use only one. And just I'm going to make okay this, accept this, accept this again. And in my case, this is very important. I have an NVIDIA RTX or a Quadro RTX A5500. This is a very expensive graphic card, it's a very high end graphics card of the professional line of Quadro for NVIDIA. And this is my GPU. In the version, actually, this is one of the best tricks that I'm going to show you. And I think this is the one of the most informative tips, things of all, all the video. ANSYS is very special in the regarding what kind of GPU models it accepts in order to accelerate the, the mechanical simulations in ANSYS Mechanica. And it's going to throw you an error when you try to solve a job and you don't have a verified or certified GPU model and usually they just certify for acceleration devices very high-end models like the P5000, the M5000 
or above the 5000 series, the RTX 5000, the RTX A5000, 6000, 8000s, and those are very expensive graphic cards. But nowadays, for example, you can have as well maybe something like an NVIDIA 3060, which has an insane amount of CUDA cost and also good memory, 8 or 12 gigabytes of memory. And with those graphics cards, you can also really improve the computational time of your simulations. But ANSYS is going to tell you that, no, that you cannot because you have not a compatible graphics card in your system. But hear this through. There is a trick, an eye trick. I found it uh, a few years ago, and I think there is no that many people in the world that actually knows this, so I will show you this. If you have, for example, something like an RTX A4000, a really great graphics card with a lot of CUDA cores, and this is going to tell you that, hey, no, you don't have a, a verified GPU for the system, but what you can do is you can go to, you can go to your system settings, you can go to the system variables. This is in German, but this is just the, the system variables of the system. You can go to here to the environmental variables of Windows. In this case, you can create a new environmental uh, system variable. You just need to create a new system variable with the ANS GPU overwrite and the value is going to be one. When you create this system variable, ANSYS is going to immediately accept any GPU from NVIDIA that you are throwing to the system, which is amazing. Actually, this is kind of licensing, bypassing. No, actually not licensing, bypassing. You are actually just telling ANSYS to override that requirement of have, a, of have a verified GPU. And in order to do that, you can use, for example, an NVIDIA M4000, an A4000, an RTX A4000, and any GPU actually you can use for now in order to accelerate the computational time of your ANSYS simulations. So going back to ANSYS, now that you have activated these uh, GPU capabilities, for example, now I'm going to clear the solution here because I'm going to show you again how it works. And once you have everything done, everything set up, like the processing settings again, you are sure that you are using the amount of code that your machine uh, and your models requires, and you selected NVIDIA, you just need to run the job. We are going to solve this in this case. And I'm going to show you now how it actually looks. Now the system is going to start to compute. And if you take a look, now the 3D, the 3D, Capabilities of my graphic card is running as well in the background because I'm recording this with OBS Studio. But I'm going to you are going to see now how ANSYS is going to start and take advantage of this uh, GPU in order to accelerate the job. If you, as you see here now, the memory has already increased. Now we are using 6.2 gigabytes of the 24 gigabytes available available that I have of video memory of VRAM and. Now ANSYS is going to detect that, of course, the uh, ANS GPU override variable is activated and it's going to take advantage of the GPU capabilities. And depending on your model, on your setup, on your simulation, uh, ANSYS may or may not take advantage of the GPU, depending on a lot of factors. But usually for stat static structural mechanics, um, it's going to work. It's going to, it's going to be really take advantage of this. If you want a more depth in video of how this works in the background, just please let me know in the comment, give me a like, and I will do my best in order to explain to you the background of how the GPU is really connecting with ANSYS. But yeah, uh, as you see here, for example, this is very important. ANSYS is already telling you that this solution is going to be using the GPU acceleration capability. Amazing, amazing. And this is really, really important because for example, if you have a normal license, I don't know, like a license for, 12 cores in this case, and you, you because they are they are expensive the licenses and you are not paying more or your university is not paying more or you don't want just to pay more for more licenses for more cores in order to accelerate or decrease the computational time. What you can do is you can do less cores, maybe like eight cores, but using one GPU and it's going to be even better. The computational time is going to decrease without increasing the licensing that you require in order to run your models, which is an incredible thing. And it's what like gold, literally. 
And so now ANSI is going to take advantage of this. For example, if you see here, now the GPU is using 11 gigabytes of video memory. We can just here take a look to the CUDA. CUDA now is working. This graphics card has over 10,000 CUDA cores. So in this case, probably we are using like 2,000 CUDA cores in order to compute this model. And but it's amazing. Who is working is amazing. My GP, my CPU is also like 40% being utilized because I, I only selected 12 cores for this model. And of memory RAM, we are using around 45 gigabytes of, of the 192 that I have available in my system. But yeah, here again, the RTX A5500 is working. It's doing its job. And you, as you can see here now, it's solving, it's really doing it. It's, it's, it's really solving the model and it's working perfectly. The important thing of this, this is going to be running now in the background, is I have a small uh, graph for you. As you see here, I run this model with 12 cores, CPU only, and the same model with 12 cores, but with the GPU, the NVIDIA RTX A5500 activated as, a, as accelerator. And as you can see here, 3.3 times we decrease the computational time. We went from 20 minutes, like literally 20 minutes to solve the problem to six minutes. We have an improve of 3.3 times the computational time. I mean, maybe for you it's not that much, but 3.3 times. Imagine that you have a huge model that it requires, I don't know, like two hours to compute. If you can bring those two hours to 30 minutes, you can iterate, you can improve your simulation and you can go faster, you can be more effective, you can be more productive and you can go through your product development process even in a better way because it allows iterations, it allows like proofing and it's, it's a really amazing thing. And I already test as, as well with no, still bigger models and smaller models. You just need to take into account that if you have bigger models, you need to have a GPU that has enough memory to build all the equations and put them into the memory of the graphics card. Otherwise, probably it's not going to improve that much or decrease that much the computational time for your solution. As you see here now, the CUDA cores are working 100% solving the, the, the job. This is insane. And actually that's why I use GPUs into my system because you can really take advantage of them. Here, as you see, we are still using 11 gigabytes because the model is not that big, 1.3 million elements, but the CUDA cores are really being utilized 100%, more than 10,000 CUDA cores in order to parallelize the job, which is amazing. And I love that actually from computers to see what you can do when you have the right tools. So let's go back to the job and let's take a look how, how, how it looks. Now it's actually, uh, I think it's almost finishing. As I remember, as I just told you, six minutes is the, is the time. And I think we are already getting to that. So I will just cut a little bit here and see you when the job is done in a few minutes. So guys, I'm back. It just took like literally like 30 seconds after I cut the video, the job is now finished. And as you can see here, now ANSYS is going to release the usage of the memory over the GPU and it's going to release as well the, yeah, the, the whole usage of the GPU. I think you saw already here. And it took really literally like six minutes and it's an amazing thing. But however, there are some factors to consider when using GPUs. Uh, first of all, the size of the models that you are using. If you have literally, if you have, as I just mentioned before, like very small models, like 100 elements, 50,000 elements, you probably are pretty much good with four cores CPU, with six core CPU, like really five G, six G old CPUs, they are going to make the job insanely good. If you are over like 500,000 elements, if you are in the 1 million elements zone, if you are, if you are as well in the 5 million elements zone in your models, then you can really take advantage of these GPU acceleration capabilities, but take into account the following aspect. You need to have enough amount of CPU cores, depending on the elements. I would recommend you like probably for each 100 elements, you should have at least, you should add at least one CPU core probably. 
And for one CPU core, you need at least four gigabytes of RAM extra in order that the CPU really takes use of this memory RAM for itself. Before it was like for one, for each CPU core, you should have like two gigabytes of RAM, but now with Windows and everything happening with the new updates of Windows, Windows 11, you really require more memory RAM for each core in order to really take advantage of GPU acceleration. So uh, remember again, the GPU that you have needs to have enough VRAM to accommodate the, the number of elements, the size of your model. If you have like maybe up to 700,000 or 600,000 elements, probably you are good with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, for example, like the NVIDIA RTX 4000, the maybe even the, the NVIDIA uh, P4000, the RTX 4000, the even better if you have something like the RTX A 4000 that has 16 gigabytes of memory RAM and 6000 CUDA cost. And if you are really going over 1 million elements, I would recommend, I will really highly recommend to you having a, G a GPU with more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM, like the maybe the P5000, the RTX 5000 the RTX A4000, A, A the A5000. In my case, I have 24 gigabytes of RAM in order to make really, really huge model and test them. But yeah, about 1 million elements, probably more than 12 gigabytes of video memory. And of course, I can also recommend to you, and this is very, very important, don't run simulations in mechanical hard drives. Totally prohibited, I will tell you, because otherwise the bottleneck is going to be your hard drive. The, tr the transfer rates between CPU, memory RAM, and your storage is going to be the bottleneck, the storage. And yeah, really use NVMe drives if you can, otherwise SSDs, but at least SSDs. In the best case scenario, NVMe's with at least three gigabytes of transfer rate per second, and you are going to be very much Good to go. So remember again, ANSYS GPU acceleration is an amazing thing for mechanical, structural, um, static or transient mechanical structure. It's going to make a very nice job. For ANSYS Fluent is actually a little bit different, the activation of GPU, but actually it's very, very, very fast. You can find those kind of things in Google, very easy, how to activate for ANSYS Fluent GPU, and it's going to really accelerate as well those fluid simulations. But just in this case, for mechanical structure, we had an improvement on, of 3.3%. This is important as well, for example, just as a small conclusion and as a recommendation for you. If you have an old workstation, maybe something like the, MB, like the HP C440, which you can have them nowadays, like for 200 US dollars or something like that. But you have a good graphics card, something like an RTX A4000 which is actually now in the 500 US dollars zone price. Now it's, it's really good price. If you have that combination, like a four core CPU and an NVIDIA RTX A4000, you can really accelerate massively the simulation time. And that is an amazing thing. With a really 80, 80 years old workstation paired with a nice graphics card, you can still simulate as hell models. And that's a nice thing, actually. You don't, you do not require more licenses. And actually, you can rough John's uh, jobs in parallel if you have more GPUs, something like the Precision 5810, the Precision 5820, the HP C4 G4, even the HP C440 that I love personally. They allow multi GPU configurations and you can really take advantage of those things. So yeah, thank you very much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this is very informative for you. I love to use these finite element simulations with GPU accelerations. Take a look as well to my Abacus video if you want to accelerate as well your Abacus simulation times. And yeah, thank you very much guys for watching. Any question that you have about ANSYS GPU accelerations or anything that you have about which GPU, which CPU, how to best configure your machines for finite element simulations, please just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer to you. So thank you very much guys for watching. Thank you very much for being here. Now we are reaching the 1,500 subscribers and I'm going to do my best to keep doing, doing a good job here. Thank you very much again and see you until the next time.